Welcome to part four of the Ultimate New York Walking Tour. If you missed any of the previous parts, they're all linked in the description or popping up on the screen. So part three was all neighborhoods and parks, and now we're moving on to landmarks. And the first landmark is the Empire State Building on 34th Street and 5th. The Empire State Building is obviously like the most iconic building in New York City, the Empire State of Mind. Yeah. <laughs> Some fun facts about the Empire State Building is it was built so fast. The planning and construction from start to finish was 20 months. Wow, that <laughs> is record time. <laughs> People can't even build custom homes in that time. <laughs> the entire Empire State Building, 20 months. Also a sign of the times is it was completed in 1931 and the original plan for the spire on top was for blimps, airships, to be able to dock there and people unload and go through customs and be out on the streets of New York within 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and from Empire State Building, we're gonna keep walking north on Fifth Avenue towards Bryant Park and the New York Central Library. Central Library is a, just a beautiful building. And Bryant Park is just is also a great place to stop, play some games, or take a break. The library itself, at the time of its construction, was actually the largest marble building in the United States. And also, the library was built on the battleground that George Washington fought against the British in the Revolutionary War. The library is also just a great place to see on our way to the Chrysler Building, which is where we're going now. But instead of taking the regular route, if you actually turn on 41st Street to the east, you're on Library Way. And so on your way to see the Chrysler Building, you actually look down and there is quotes from a bunch of different famous authors for the next two avenues. So at the corner of Lexington and 42nd, you'll run into the Chrysler Building. And the Chrysler Building was actually built in 1930. And at the time of its construction, it was the tallest building until it was surpassed by the Empire State Building 11 months later. <laughs> it was though the first man-made structure to surpass a thousand feet. And it's still the tallest brick building in the world. And after you see the Chrysler Building, if you just walk one block back to the west, you're gonna run into Grand Central Terminal. get into Grand Central, other than just looking up and basking in the glory that is Grand Central. Yeah. <laughs> Two fun things that you should definitely check out is one, looking up at the ceiling at the crab and seeing the dark spot that is on the ceiling that was left unclean to show you how dirty the ceiling got whenever they allowed smoking in here. Yeah, <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> After that, head downstairs to the main concourse and we'll check out the Whispering Gallery. So this is the Whispering Gallery. It's an unintended feature of Grand Central, just the way they built this hallway, concourse, whatever, uh, right in front of the Oyster Bar. If you stand in one of the corners and have a friend stand in the other, you can talk to each other, uh, just like you're standing next to each other. That's so fun. As you leave Grand Central, I would suggest walking through the MetLife building so we can take a scenic route to Rockefeller Center. So 
So whenever you come out of the MetLife building, you end up on Park Avenue. And we came this way just as a detour because Park Avenue has some of my favorite buildings on it. You can just look around and see all of these amazing skyscrapers. You also get a good view of the Park Avenue apartment building that isn't that fun to look at, but it is the tallest building in New York if you don't count the spire of One World Trade. Once you get to 50th Street, we're gonna turn back to the west and head towards St. Patrick's Cathedral. So once you hit Fifth Avenue, you run right into St. Patrick's Cathedral, which is the largest Gothic cathedral in the United States. Yeah. Also, um, F. Scott and Zelda Fitzgerald were married here, so. And there's also 150 weddings a year held here. Ooh. It's, it's, it's the spot of spots. <laughs> and after St. Patrick's, if you walk one block back to the south, you're gonna run into Rockefeller Center, which right now, it is actually Christmas time. So it's Christmas Rockefeller Center, which is the best Rockefeller Center. You do come to Rockefeller Center during Christmas time, it is a madhouse. But Rockefeller Center is one of the most important landmarks of New York City. Built by John D. Rockefeller himself. I'm sure he didn't personally build it, but he financed it. it. <laughs> but it is now the home of NBC Studios, Saturday Night Live. So many TV shows and movies have been filmed here. And it is home to the New York Christmas tree. If you head inside Rockefeller Center, it's actually open to the public on the lower level. There's a concourse down here with restaurants, and shops and you can also use the restroom for free and if you have the time you should definitely check out top of the rock it's the observatory deck in the rockefeller center sweeping panoramic views of new york city the best view you can get the empire state building has an observatory as well but rockefeller center is the one that you want to do because it has empire state building in the view yes <laughs> walk around the corner of Rockefeller Center, you run right into the Radio City Music Hall, which the neon facade outside has become a New York iconic <laughs> staple, photographed as much as like the Empire State Building. But also it has hosted things like the Grammys and the Tonys, so all of the celebrity culture around it makes it such a hub for tourism. It is just one of those New York things that you just want to see. It's worth seeing, even though it is so touristy, you know? <laughs> but Radio City Music Hall actually concludes the landmark portion and part four of the Ultimate New York City Walking Tour. In the next part, we're gonna be heading up to Central Park, so make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you're notified of whenever part five comes out. If you wanna see the exact route we took in this tour, you can get a Google Map link in the description. Thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you back here for part five. Bye.